as it pertains to risk. When do you think we'll have the risk assessment piece done? Yeah, that, that's my responsibility to get that done, get it submitted to the secretary and the president. Probably, my guess is in the next couple of weeks. And then, okay. Yeah. If you go through the risk... And that gets submitted to you as well. It's not just to the secretary and the president. Thank you. If in that risk assessment we find some glaring risks that maybe we didn't foresee, at that time I'm assuming we will make some changes to the budget? That's part of the idea is for to submit it to uh, the secretary and the president and to the Congress uh, that if there are errors or glare, glaring errors. But or not errors, errors risk. but significant risk. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's, I'm trying to wrap my head significant around. Significant risk has to be covered by uh, the mitigating factors of the budget. Yeah. I'm trying to wrap my head around how we put together a budget, but we don't really have a good risk assessment. Am I, am I not understanding that correctly? No, we do. Well, I participate in, in, in the budget, and, and my staff does as well. So there is a iterative process of risk assessment throughout so the So we have a budget. general idea. Okay, right. thank you, sir. Then I need some clarification from both of you on the President's budget requests for combat vehicles. Um, can you explain the Army's rationale for the precipitous drop in vehicle procurement, specifically the Abrams tank, and what risks are we incurring with that drop in procurement of the Abrams tanks? Well, first, we've got about four or 5,000 tanks in the inventory. Uh, so it, again, it's relative to uh, the national defense strategy, and, and we are optimizing the military for a fight that will occur sometime, if it occurs at all, hopefully it never does, in the 2030s. Uh, and uh, tanks may or may not, probably not, play a very significant role in a war against China in the 2030s. Uh, what will play a really significant role will be space and cyber. Uh, but also air defense systems, long-range precision fires, uh, naval capabilities, and air capabilities, and, so, and sub So we just sub don't see a ground war, with so China, to speak. I, the, the ground will have a uh, the ground forces, Marine and Army will play okay. a, uh, an important role, but the dominant role will be played by the air and maritime forces. With that, then the Air Force is the oldest, smallest, and least ready in its entire history. The Air Force leadership has repeatedly explained that they need to procure at least 72 fighter aircraft. Um, however, in 23 DOD budget cuts, the Air Force new tactical combat aircraft only to buy 57. So with the future being in air and space where we really need, why are we not fulfilling the 72? Why are we only procuring 57 if that's the future? I thought it was, well, I Maybe a I minor point, I thought it was 61, but... Uh, well, eat, let's e even say yeah. it's 61. It's still less than what yeah, has been exactly. requested, right? Yeah, the, the Air Force opted uh, to want to buy and purchase and return that money for uh, to build the Block 4 F-35, which is the most advanced of the versions, right? So the ones that are, are being chosen not to buy, uh, those are uh, Block 3s. Uh, so uh, we, we want to get the most advanced versions of these aircraft. The, the F-35 is going to be the quarterback of the Joint Force in a fight uh, in the Western Pacific. That aircraft is critical. We want the most modern capabilities, and that's what, that's what we're purchasing. So we're just we're taking the same money. We're just deferring it to a different That's the, uh, That's the aircraft. idea behind what CQ Brown and, and uh, the Secretary of the Air Force have decided to do. Okay. Right. And, and just an overall question in, in, my, in my last minute is, it appears with inflation being, you know, 8% and our budget being less than inflation, you know, we, we've all talked about it and we're not keeping up with inflation. One of the risks that I'm assuming that we're assessing is the risks on how we look to our adversaries and our allies in terms of our, our budget weakness. And, and I say that is if I look at China, for example, which is one of our, our major adversaries, right? They are spending, maybe even overspending, some could argue. We are cutting back. What message do you think that sends to our allies and adversaries, sir? Yeah, so I, I, don't, I, don't think we are, I don't think we're cutting back. I think this is a substantial budget. Seven hundred three quarters of a trillion dollars is a lot of money. The Chinese are spending about 500 uh, billion, 560 billion or so, on their announced budget. If you factor in things like the, the I apologize, sir. 
ladies yeah. time has expired. Thank you um, very much. Mr. Horsford is recognized for five minutes. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses. Uh, Secretary Austin, it's uh, my understanding that the Air Force intends to submit a legislative proposal this year requesting expanded usage of the Nevada Test and Training Range located in my district. Uh, 